Matthew 24. And we may have problems with the live feed for Facebook, so bear with us. Now, Matthew 24 is a favorite chapter, verse, for the signs and wonders of the Laodicean church age. And it's not for the Laodicean church age. It's for the book of Acts. It's for the tribulation period and the great tribulation period. And tonight we're going to look at the second coming. And as you've seen what we studied so far in Matthew 24, you can't go running into it. Say, well, today in uh, Greece, there was a great big earthquake. And then there, there was upstate New York, they felt an earthquake. Well, you can't say the Son of Man is coming. Because what do you do if 2024 comes and Jesus had not come yet? Now, the earth is preparing itself for the tribulation period. And the earth is burping, if I may say, because the violence and sin of the world, the violence and sin of man, Reacts upon the earth. It's not global warming. It's sin. It's God's judgment for man to repent. Because when you go into the book of Revelation, you read of all the plagues that this earth will, will behold. Listen, I'm not looking for an earthquake. I'm not looking for six tornadoes to come to Florida. I'm not looking for California to fall off in the ocean and, uh, uh, Yellowstone to blow up, and I'm not looking for those things. I'm look, hearing for a trump. In the meantime, I'm going to do to the best ability that God gives me to tell the gospel to a lost and dying world. And right now, my health is limited. I pray for people who do it. And I'm going to try to train, use Facebook to preach the gospel, and use Facebook and what the Lord has me do to train Christians up. But I'm not going to look for nothing. I'm listening. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And glad to see in church, Jesus, I want to see. I want to be fine. I want to be entertained. And you want to be in a big mess before God. Now learn a parable, a parable of a fig tree. Now, the fig leaf represents Self-righteousness. That's Adam and Eve sewing fig leaves together. Fig tree, which is far different from a fig leaf, represents the nation of Israel. Jesus came to a fig tree, the nation of Israel. All he saw was leaves. All he saw in that tree was self-righteousness. He didn't see any fruit. Now here's a fig tree, Israel. And that verse is back in... See where I'm at. Uh, 2119, you want to check it out. The fig tree, the parable. When his branch, singular. No branch, even though Israel is a nation divided into 12. It's of Abraham. When his branch is yet tender, young. And put it forth leaves. <laughs> Self-righteousness. You know that summer is nigh. There's no fruit. That fig tree, and when Jesus came to the fig tree, tells you what season. And we, we, we studied that before in 21. So when you see a fig tree, it's got leaves. It's tender. New growth. If it were, I don't know anything about a fig tree. But if it's an apple tree, tender and leaf, <coughs> it's new growth. Summer is not. All right, so here it is. Here's the tree. Oh, look, some, here comes summer. You don't need a weather forecaster. So likewise, when you see the th all these things that we just talked about, chapter 21, verse 1 to now, know that it is near, even at the doors, not the door. Not the door where Jesus Christ is standing at. Not the door that opens up in Revelation 4. Doors. Plural. And not the rock band at the time I grew up. Verily, I say unto you, when Jesus says verily, pay attention. When, ver when Jesus says verily, very, pay more attention. 
And then when Jesus talks, it says, let's say to the Lord, pay even more attention. This generation shall not pass to all these things were fulfilled. That's kind, of, that's kind of like everything there, this generation, it's a long generation. And there, there's a great, great uh, schism among the church, among Christians, among the scholars, among pastors and teachers, what a generation actually is. But run that generation back to Matthew chapter 1, and he talks about three, three or four generations there. It's Jewish. The, the Europeans, the Americans, don't care about generations. They want now. Heaven and earth shall pass away. That is Revelation 19 into 20. Okay? So your mother earth, your mother nature, you saved the cows, saved the bunny rabbits, saved the manatees, and they're going bye-bye. Everything on this earth right now, I watch, if you want to look it up on, on YouTube, I watch the people called the proper people. And what they do is they go into old abandoned buildings and they film. And when you look at these old abandoned buildings, they're decaying, they're falling, the, the, the walls have caved in, the ceiling has caved in, water has done. And you see that the, that the earth has overcome these buildings and life of, of vegetation. And one building he was they were doing the other night, you know, it's great Fancy hotel and wow, great! You couldn't even tell it was a hotel no more. And they walked in his room. Well, this is what the guy's room. He died of a heart attack. Well, and ain't doing no good no more. All the riches and all the gold in in Pharaoh's cabinets and Pharaoh's tombs first had been robbed by the great robbers and are sitting in, in museum. Listen, friend, you're gonna pile it all up. It's all gonna pass away. Peter says fervent heat. There is a global warming by God. But my words, W-O-R-D-S. So my words, what's that mean? Is that the ASV, which removes words? Is that the NIV, which removes and adds words? Is that the New King James looks real, but it's not? Are we going to get to heaven and, and it's going to... Open any Bible you want? Absolutely not. It's going to be the family of the King James Bible, not of Anna, Anna, Alexandria. There's one book, one word. It's the Bible that comes from Antioch, where they were first called Christians. Now, you would think words, okay, you know, it'll be any Bible you want. Absolutely correctly not. Shall not pass away. So what does that tell you? It all started in Genesis 1. God, Jesus Christ said, let there be light. It closes off. What Revelation, where he says, surely I come quickly. I figure how to say. All these are going to be in heaven one day. And I bet you, in between Genesis 1 and Revelation, I think it's 22, 23, or 24, the modern Bibles have tampered, have, have done an Eve. They add, they subtract, they, they footnote, they, they bracket. There's one set of words for God. One spirit, one God, one word. Now, you can use a Geneva Bible. That's the same family of the King James. You can get the original King James, and they had it out on the, on the books. That's very hard reading, but it's, you know, our Bible, the King James, we have lettering that we can recognize. We have spelling that recognizes. Too. I mean, you can find music with a K. That's no problem. We have Bible history, Bible Baptist history, from graveyards, and we've been to graveyards, and you look at the the, the spelling, and I think the S's were F's, and, and it's like, oh, man. 
Thank God we don't have a Bible like that today. It's been translated into our proper reading, but we're not looking at the Bible that's been translated into how you think what God thinks. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. So you'll get men. 1938, Jesus is going to come. 1942, Jesus is going to come. 1914, Jesus is going to come. 1932, Jesus is going to come. You know, all the reason to 2023, Jesus is going to come. Oh, look at that cloud formation. Jesus is going to come. Oh, there was an earthquake in Greece today. Jesus is going to come. You don't know. And you have no business of giving a date. Matthew 24, 36. No man. Are you a man? Are you born of a woman? You don't know. And the person you listen to don't know. They say they know. You need to go out the back door, seal the back door, and never come back. No. No with no man. And look at Jesus. No. That's a verily, verily. No man. No. I mean, that's, that's why, let's say you put poison in a counter and, and you tell your child, don't touch that. And they put, no, don't, I said, don't touch it. Because you know what? We're like little children. Mom has told us not to do something. Dad has told us not to do it. And we're going to do it anyway. Eve done it. Not the angels in heaven. Well, that's quite interesting. You know, there are things that angels don't know. They don't know the date of the rapture. They don't know the date. They don't know about the blood sacrifice of Jesus Christ because they've never been redeemed by blood. That's why the angels that, that fall for Satan, that's why Paul says we're going to judge angels because we trusted Jesus by faith. We've never seen Jesus. Those third of the angels have looked at Jesus for how long? But my father only. Now, the Jehovah Witnesses will run to this verse and say, you know, Jesus is not God. Okay. Jesus is in his man form, man and God, but here he is in the man form. But if Jesus is the father and the father is the son, there they are one. Or if you cannot explain the Trinity to the fullest, there is in the Trinity, though they're one, there is the father is higher than the son. Okay. And you'll see that in the in in the New Jerusalem, they actually become. I don't get. It. There's a, there's a little bit to the Father, there's a little bit to the Son. The Son prays to the Father, but they're one and don't even get involved. Just believe the three are in one. Jesus is God. <clears throat> Faith. But as in the days of Noah, that's Noah. In the Greek, hey, you learn Greek today. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. It ain't going to do you nothing. Because it could be when we get to heaven, we're all going to get brand new names. Noah may be called something else. He may call the names just. Noah was just. So shall also become the son of man. Okay, now we're at the second advent. So, the lay of the seeing Christian is going to run to 38. We'll see. <laughs> For as in the days they were before the flood, judgment, worldwide judgment, only eight people survived. That's important. Now, I say, and you don't have to take this to the count, but I'm going to say this. For, I think the church age is going to get to the point worldwide, including America, you're not going to have any open churches. You're going to go back to Acts, you're going to meet house to house, and there's going to be very little Say, uh, and there's going to be very little called out when the rapture comes. I mean, they got pictures. All these airplanes are going to crash and the trains are going to crash and highways are going to block. I don't think so. I mean, you got to believe in evolution. Everything's going to get hunky dory in the light of the scene in church age and evolution. It's a lie. You can't even get church people to show up on Sunday morning. And then, yeah, there are there are people who will use live live screen to be lazy, and there are people like me who can't make it out to church. I use I use live screen, and the thing is, you know, the preachers think live screen is so good and all that. There's been tests by those Christian polls in the Christian magazine. They realize they'll watch ten minutes of it, then they'll flip or go find a message they like, or they'll go in the kitchen and make their brownies. 
You think your live stream is so great and wonderful. It's not. They don't have the heart for it. Somebody like me, I'll listen to it. I'll listen to a message before my church. I'll listen to a message after my church. For the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking. Let's bring this to the end of the tribulation period. There's a flood coming, but not of water. There's a flood of Jesus Christ, angels, and the Christians coming back on horseback. And we're going to come and pick up Israel and bring them to the promised land like Joshua. Eating and drinking. That's a really great sign. So at the end of the tribulation, eating and drinking. Marrying and giving to marriage. This normal life, the seven years. All the aspects you read in the book of Revelation, people are still eating. They're still marrying and giving to marriage. Kind of funny with the drinking because the water's turned to blood. The eating, the Antichrist is eating the literal bodies and literal blood of Jewish people. Until the day that Noah entered the ark. And the thing will be okay, let's not say it's the seven years. Let's say it's a nation of Israel going to sail Petra. They enter into the salvation. They enter into where the doorway where God. Now, the door doesn't shut because they're going to, the Bible says they got to go out in the wilderness and collect that manna, which is the broken head of the dragon. The dragon is the devil. Don't get me going on that one. And they're going to risk their life, unlike the wilderness, to get that. And they'll have to get back right away before they're caught by the Antichrist. So there's their eating and drinking. Drinking, if it's celepetra, they, they say in celepetra, there's these vast uh, cisterns, and all they do is collect water. <laughs> okay? So maybe before the Son of Man, maybe it's the life of Israel protected, that place where God's given them wings, what we're going to read next. So we're actually not going from the tribulation to the Antichrist, we're actually going from the tribulation, halfway through the tribulation, to the Jews going to a place prepared for them, and God preparing for them, like the days of Noah. There wasn't many in that ark, and there's not going to be many in Celebrate, if that's the city of God. I say, if, that, I mean, a lot of people say Celebrate, it may not be. I mean, it may be some secret, because if we know it's hell, it preaches, so do any Christ. But then again, God can prevent. God can prevent. So, I would assume most of the world knew where Noah's Ark was. Maybe not. And knew not until the flood came. And took them all away. The flood killed them all. So shall also the coming of some of men. All right, that would be the actual moment at the end of the seven years. They have no stand. They have no idea what's going on. And they don't. And then Jesus comes and takes them all away and casts them off into hell. But that wouldn't be the Jews. Many, some of the Jews will go off into to be caught by the second advent of Jesus and they'll go off into hell. Not all Jews are going to be saved. Some of them are going to be a preacher. So you may have the world in 38 and 39, or you may have the nation of Israel, or you got a combination of both. One protected and one not protected. But we have another problem here. They knew not until the flood came. What didn't they know? They didn't know judgment was coming. Well, as far as the tribulation period, the Bible, they would not know. They, they're not going to read the Bible. Who's reading the Bible in the tribulation period? The Jews. Who's not reading the Bible? Those that are marked with, with the beast. It's completely forbidden. But did they really not know? 
You're, you're confusing me. Okay? Take your Bibles to 2 Peter. And I'm going to tell you they did know, but they didn't know. All right, I got you all confused now. 2 Peter 2 5. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah the eighth person. All right, there's a part of the world that's saved Noah and his family. We know that. The rest of the world are in hell to death. A preacher of righteousness bringing in the flood upon the world of ungodliness. So back to Matthew. They don't know. But Peter says they knew. But Jesus said, but the day, I mean, where that's going. And they knew not, verse 39. In the tribulation period, there's 144,000 Jews, not Jehovah Witnesses, virgin males. I had the female come to the, to, I had a man come to me with his child, and I, I just throw that at them. They got a marker in their forehead, so I'll say, let me see your forehead. They're running around the world preaching, primary to the Jews. Noah preached, to, Noah got on the building site and preached to the world while they built that ark. The 144,000 are preaching the gospel of the kingdom. You say, well, how can they not know? It is Monday night. Tell me what your preacher preached about Sunday morning. Do you know what your preacher taught? All right, do you know what he preached last Sunday? What was the first message he put, he, he preached on on the uh, the first Sunday of this year, that wasn't too far ago. So Moses preached, the hundred forty four thousand would preach. Your preacher preached, and yet you can't remember what the message was. Maybe the message yesterday. I preached for six years at the Daytona Beach Farmers Market. I bet you if you go ask him, what did that guy preach? I bet you many would say, well, I don't know. That's how they knew not the flood came. That's how they know not it's the seventh year. Get the Jews, because they're going to be in the book. Somehow God's going to reveal to them a King James 1611 Bible. You don't give them any other crap. And God is going to give them the heart to open the New Testament. And they're going to go through that, and, and they're going to mark it. Maybe they'll come across, you know, you know these, these, these tribulation timetables and maps or whatever. I don't know how God's going to do it, but they're going to say, oh, here we are. He just sat down on the mercy seat. Some of them are going to Matthew, Matthew 24. Yeah, there it is. And they're going to read everything before that. They're going to say, hey, that just happened. This is what's going on. Right. Then they're going to say, oh, I heard a, 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 a a major earthquake in Greece. Ha uh -huh, we're getting ready. Jerusalem has the great earthquake. We're getting ready. And there's no church age people. They have been raptured before the tribulation even starts. And took them all away. So, when Jesus comes, all the enemies, including America, all the enemies of the Jew, bye, into hell they go. Those that help the Jew, they don't even know they help the Jews. They're going to stay. So shall also, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man. So like it unto Noah. Well, what Jewish person would not know the story of Noah? It's in the law. Now, just because your your Sunday school and your Baptist church don't know about Noah, about a talking squash or a talking tomato or other nonsense you're teaching in, in your, your Sunday school Baptist church. Now, I'm not talking about the other religions. I'm laying on the Baptists. 
how Jimmy just feels so great about himself and wants to, you know, all the kind of crap that's out there. Noah preached the righteousness. So in the tribulation, preparing that ark, preparing for the coming of Jesus Christ, somebody is preaching righteousness. And that's the 144,000. And primarily the world is going to go to hell. Noah and his four boys and their wives, eight people. That's a new beginning. Eight is a new beginning. Are in that ark and they're signed, sealed, and delivered. Now the Jews, when they get to their city, prepare for them in, in Revelation 12. They're not really so secure. When they got to go out and get that bread, the wilderness. Now, in the wilderness, there was no strife for the water that came from the rock. And in this, if it's still a preacher, there's no strife for that water because the water is produced by the city itself. And there's a possibility, now you can throw this in the garbage can. While the world is drinking blood, the Jews are drinking water. And it was, it was night in Egypt and it was daylight in Egypt. The land of Israel. The, the animals suffered in Egypt. The animals were protected in, in the land of Israel. This is where you got to go back to Exodus. Exodus is the law. The Jews would, the Jews would like, well, man, there's blood all through the world. Hey, that's in the law. Hey, the Bible I says, the Bible we found here says, go to Revelation. All right, we'll go to Revelation. Whoa. And they'll start reading it and seeing, hey, the revelation will be for the Jew. Today's daily news. Hey, Rabbi, you open to Exodus. I'll read you out of Revelation. And we're going to compare it. Look out. And another one, hey, you know, Matthew. I want you guys to open up to Matthew. Let's see. And the Holy Spirit is going to work. Now, now we get into other troubles. We get into other trouble. If you run to Matthew 24, if you run to Matthew in the church age, ready? Now, as a Christian, you believe in the rapture, right? Okay. Then shall two be in a field. Field's a type of world. All right, so you got two Christians out in the field, you got two Christians out in the world. Okay? You're shopping at the grocery store. One shall be taken, the other left. What if what if they're both saved in the are you telling me in the church age, that verse right there says half the Christians are going to go? But Jesus says in the tribulation period, when God gave them great wings to fly, when God calls them away, there's a rapture in the midst of the tribulation period. There is a rapture. Jesus says one out of two will go. Pray when the rapture of the church have you ain't going to get that many unless you count the dead ones. But they're not dead in the field. The church rapture, you got dead and alive. Two men shall be grinding in the meal. So you got two Christians work at work, whatever job they do. One shall be taken, the other left. Hey, Bob, you, you said you were a Christian too. Fred went off. Oh, you're still here. But we run to Matthew. Oh, every, I, I'll sit there with any church I'm in. Oh, yeah, this we're, we're going to run to Matthew. We're on Matthew. We don't run to Mark. That's not the church age rapture. All right. Watch, therefore, for ye know not what hour the Lord does come. All right. You can put that for the church in their rapture because we don't know. We don't know. They're not going to know. But this, but know this, that the good man of the house had known in which the thief would come. He would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Now, now let's look at this verse now. If the good man of the house would have known what to watch the thief 
would come. He would have watched. He would not have suffered his house to be broken. So the good man's house is broken up by the thief. He wasn't watching. Who comes and takes who? Jesus comes and takes his people in the, in the midst of the tribulation. The thief is Jesus. He comes and takes his people away. Who would be the good man of the house? The house is the world. The good man would have been the Antichrist. So when you're preaching on the street, you, you preach six years, and you're preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, and how many people will come up to you and say, well, I'm good. And I will say, there's none that doeth good, no, not one. My jury of people I've heard, I very rarely heard, but I've heard where did Cain get his wife. I very rarely, but I did hear how did Noah get all the animals in the ark. But I've heard over, I heard at least once a week for six years hearing, I'm good. The good man is the Antichrist. The thief is Jesus. But how do you know that? Isn't there a place in the scripture that said, Jesus said, I come as a thief in the night? And they made Gentile movies about Gentiles in the tribulation period. No, 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 no. You lie, 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 lie. That thief is Jesus. The good man is Satan, the Antichrist. And Jesus has come to take his people. And the Antichrist didn't even know it was going to happen. At one point in time, the Antichrist is going to look around and say, where, where did most of them go? And there's going to be anger for the one left behind. Therefore, be ye also ready. That can go for the church. For such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man, the thief, cometh and taketh his out of the world of the Antichrist. He's not the Son of Man to us. He's the Savior. He's the groom. Who then, I mean, you can spiritually apply some of this, but not all of it to the church. Who then is a faithful and wise servant? Okay. Whom his Lord, small l, has made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season. How many Christians are out there giving food to other Christians? When you're living in the midst of the tribulation period, and you got to get the mark to get food or you're not going to, the Bible says you're not going to buy and sell, but here is somebody who's a faithful and wise servant of the Lord feeding his household Israel. How is that happening? I don't know. But some of those faithful servants are going to be the Gentiles who are going to help the Jews visit them in prison, visit them with their health. They're going to feed them. They're going to clothe them. Maybe that's the Gentiles. But they don't even know what they're doing. So don't say, for what our, I mean, be ready. They don't know what they're doing. They're just being nice and kind. The only group of people would be ready and looking for the Messiah, which they are looking for the Messiah today, but he's already come and gone. Blessed is that servant whom, the, whom his Lord has found come and shall find so doing. They're not lazy. They're not couch potato uh, Jews. They're not slumbering and living of the mark of the beast. They're working. The law is back. And the law, I'm reading through Deuteronomy. Do, 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 do. Deuteronomy holds the most for the word do. Because that's what the law is. And if you're slack in the law, law, because Jesus is not coming, the Messiah is not coming, and you're caught not doing, you're out. That is not the church salvation. 
You can go to church, 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 be 70 years old and die at 69 and a half years old and you're still going to heaven. See, that's the danger. It's Sunday. Everyone go to church. Well, not everybody can go to church. Not everybody has a church. What if you live in a country and you got to you gotta do different days to have church so the government don't catch you? What if you're in Greece and your church is under rubble now? You see, we, the Christian today, they honor the church and their pastor more than they honor God. Go to church Sunday. What about Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday? What are you going to do? Very I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. Well, when Jesus comes, he's going to have a lot. Hey, you were faithful taking care of my people. Here you go. But and if, but and if, but and if. Now we got trouble. That evil servant shall say in his heart, not with his lips, my Lord de delayeth his coming. Now, you know, get the dum 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 music. Now, what about the Christian? Let's say he says, well, you know, the rapture is, you know, blah, 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 about the rapture. All right, he loses his soul? Let's we'll see what happens. I'll show you, can't be the church, and I'm going to show you that a, a man that got up in a podium and taught a Sunday school class is wrong. And he taught the church that the church is going to go to hell. But he didn't want to believe it. And shall begin to smite his fellow servants, Jews. Well, that's not nice. Maybe he's persecuting them because they're live, trying to live right. Maybe he's taking sides of the, of the Antichrist and got the mark. <laughs> to eat and drink with the drunken. Oh, we're, now here we're in Noah's Ark. The Lord of that servant, Jewish, shall come in the day when he looketh not for him. Lord, he's going to come no matter what. He's going to, even though the servant is faithful or the servant is not faithful, the Lord is coming. In an hour that he is not aware of. <laughs> It'll be sooner than later. And shall cut him asunder. Is that a Christian? And shall appoint his portion with the hypocrite. No, we're judged at the judgment seat of Christ. We, if, if it's a loss, it gets wood, hay, or stubble. It gets ashes. It gets no rewards. You know, I've even heard Christian. I've heard the old time preachers. They used to preach this. You know, if you were a liar, you would have your part in the hell, with, you know, where, where it says in Revelation, with, with, the, with the liars and adulterers and all that. They believed there was a portion of, of liars. All you see once in a while, there, there, there's one that, you know, you lie and all that, you, you go to hell. No, you don't. It's not the church age. And if you don't confess your sins and they're not forgiven, they're not cleansed, it will go as fire and ashes. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And I sat in front of a man a few times. Well, that's not hell. Where do the hypocrites go then? Where does the unfaithful servant go then? With the context of Matthew 24, a Jewish man is not being faithful to the law and his fellow servants. Where does he go that's weeping in national teeth? Who in heaven, and you've read the counts of heaven, in New Jerusalem, he's going to wipe away our, our tears. 
no more pain, no more suffering, then why would there be weeping and gnashing of teeth? That's hell. Now, there'll be weeping when you find out that you get nothing or you lose rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. But the gnashing of the teeth, agony, I, I don't think so. Great sorrow. This man has been unfaithful to the law. And when you're unfaithful to the law, That was hell. So look at verse 48 again. In the tribulation period, there is a double salvation. But, and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, my Lord delay the coming. Look at that. He's proclaiming the Messiah as his Lord. The, the, the faith in the tribulation period is you got to believe on Jesus Christ and the law. I believe the devil's going to preach in the tribulation. I'm trying to think of the verse now. Not by works of the law, but by faith. I can't think of the verse right now. My, my brain. Not by works of the law, but by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We can quote that today. We cannot quote the law and salvation, as Paul wrote to one of the churches. I believe the Antichrist, I believe the devils, and the devil is going to preach, oh, no, 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 you don't need the law. You don't need to come to Jerusalem. Just believe on Jesus, and I shall be saved in thy house. And then when the Jews do come to Jerusalem, and they bring their offerings for three and a half years, they're going to be pleased and happy as milk. I don't know. I don't know if the Bible tells you what season it is because they got to appear before the Lord three times a year. It's going to be one of them seasons. That veil, those veils are going to open up because that's the only way you can look into the holy, the holy. All those veils are going to open up. The outer veil, the the the, the veil, of the tabernacle, and the inner veil, and in what they're going to see over the altar, over the brazen altar, over the table. Over the incense altar, they're going to see the Antichrist. See, at that moment, they're going to be, oh boy, we in trouble, because no one belongs in that place but the Antichrist. I mean, but, excuse me, but the Almighty God. At that point, they're going to flee. At that point, they become an enemy, number one enemy. Of the Antichrist and the devil. Many are going to be caught. You better hope that day is not a wintry day. And the, fly, the, the flights are grounded. You better not hope it's a Sabbath day. Because they're going to be closed. You better not hope you're with child. Because that child is going to burden you. That's another thing too. Let me just say. This came to my thought. That child is going to burden you. That child that's on your breast is going to burden you. There's no room for America because, you know, children today of America would be, let's abort the damn thing. Excuse me for saying damn. But that's what the typical person, just, just send them off to the public school system because, you know, I'm going to have sex with anybody I can get. And every child I get by whoever the father is today, I'm just going to get credits for my welfare, for my SNAP. That's why in many cases you have children who don't know their fathers because the government is the father. The government brings home the money for her. It's a legalized American prostitute system. You think God's going to bless this country? Right now they're, they're trying they're trying to shut down SNAP. And like, there's one guy in one of the states he wants to cut off cheese and a, no that's that's not what you do. I'm throwing my five cents in. You remove the people off SNAP who's never worked a day in their life and never filled out an IRS form. That vet 
that widow whose husband died who worked, that person who's on Social Security, that person who is legitimately uh, 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 disabled, you give them SNAP. You remove all the deadbeats who come to America for the free SNAP, who, who, who don't work for a living and all that, you know, you will have a lot more money. Or well, they won't stay in America. Bye. We'll give you one train ticket, one boat ticket, one airplane, airplane ticket. Don't come back. And Fidel Castro will get, get mad at us because his island will be overflowed. Puerto Rico would be all overflowed and people are going to hate what I'm just saying because it would be a lot more populated. Oh, and they won't be coming across the borders no more in groves. You won't need that wall. Everybody here in America, get the free stuff. No, there's no more free stuff. Huh? I gotta go turn home and go back. Go back. You go back because we ain't giving you nothing free. That's how you shut it down. Put some dynamite under the Statue of Liberty. Say timber. Let it fall in the let it fall in the in the river. Don't bring your your sick, your poor. Your, stay home because you ain't gonna get it. That's what's ruining America. It, it started off good, but we're not in evolution. It don't get better and better and better. It gets worse, 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 worse. That's evolution. God says, God's way is it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. Wait till the Antichrist comes. Brother, it's going to have three and a half years. You're going to have all the answers you want. At the last three and a half years, you're going to have hell. Then you're going to die and end up in hell. Only those that trust in Jesus, only the, all those that believe what Jesus said and what God said to do will be saved. That's the point. 